Hello, this is Kyle again. In the previous video, I talked about a lot of the properties of Dekinter widgets. Well, in this whole series, I talked a lot about properties of Dekinter widgets. That's because there are a lot of properties of Dekinter widgets. Two particular kinds of properties and features I didn't talk about too explicitly yet are the accessibility-focused ones and the layout or geometry-focused ones. So we'll talk about those separately now. First, we're going to talk about accessibility. This slide is really just to make the case that accessibility matters. A mindset that, well... It's possible that nobody watching has this mindset, but just in case, it's a mindset I would like to shatter, and that's that accessibility only helps people with exceptionalities. Well, of course that's not true. Almost anyone would use an accessible door switch if they were carrying something awkward. Many people I know regularly watch shows and movies with the subtitles on, regardless of language differences, just because it helps them to process what's happening. So accessibility is useful to everyone. For what it's worth, it's also a very marketable skill at the moment. In Ontario, we're subject to Ontario's Accessibility for Ontarians with Disabilities Act, or AODA. And there's a timeline for businesses to have all their public-facing software fully accessible. Now, the date for compliance has sort of uh, kept being adjusted again and again, so I can't really talk about the exact compliance date. Technically, we're all supposed to be designing and using fully accessible software already. That's even more reason to focus on this. It's also not just for us. If we're designing websites for clients' businesses, for example, our clients' businesses could also come under fire if the websites and tools we make for them aren't compliant, which reflects poorly on us and could even get us in financial or legal trouble. Four ways we can start incorporating accessibility features into our applications in the scope of this course are listed here. First, we've got a legible font and contrast. I'm going to choose not to focus on this here because we've already talked about how helpful it is to users to use standard fonts and color schemes that are supported by the major operating systems. As long as we don't intentionally use outlandish script fonts and wacky color schemes in our Tekinter applications, we will be fine. The default will work for our purposes. This matters a lot more when it comes to web design and the logos and other graphic elements we might find ourselves working with. Second, we've got the tab order. You might not be completely familiar with this if you haven't tried using an application without a pointing device of some sort, like a mouse. But applications can generally be navigated without a pointing device. The tab key is usually essential for this, scrolling through the features of the application. If this idea is new to you, try it out. Pause the video right now and try pressing the tab key once and see what happens. Then try pressing it several times and see what happens. In most software, other than word processing software, You'll see behavior just like that, where you can tab through every component of the software. For people who don't have or can't use a mouse, a trackpad, or a touchscreen, this is essential. Now in a Tekinter application, the tab order is determined by the order that the widgets are packed into the window. So as long as we plan effectively and code the widgets in a logical order, we don't need to explicitly indicate the exact order that a user tabs through the various widgets. And, in fact, I don't believe it would be possible to do it any other way. The order that we add each widget to the form is important. Third and fourth, I have keyboard access and tooltips listed. We'll need to talk about these in some more detail, so we're going to another slide. The third big point related to accessibility in our applications was keyboard access. Again, we're trying to build in functionality for people who can't use a pointing device. It's also not uncommon that people learn and use keyboard shortcuts just because they prefer them. So access keys are typically keyboard combinations that the program will respond to. And it's also really normal to give a default behavior to the enter key. If you think of any Windows dialog that we've ever opened, there's usually an obvious outcome you would associate with pressing enter. Like in a save dialog, enter will do the saving. In a properties window, enter is on the OK button. The primary function of a window or a dialog should be associated with the enter key. Now, unfortunately, this part won't make a ton of sense quite yet, not until after we discuss functions, which is sort of the whole next unit topic, which you might not learn about for two weeks. But I think it's worth discussing and considering now. We aren't at the coding part of this yet. This is skipping ahead a little, and we will revisit this at the right time, but I thought you should see this. Basically, the key combinations are named as strings that are also denoted with less than and greater than signs. So less than alt hyphen c greater than is used for alt c what this key combination would do is run a function named calculate rectangle to assign a default behavior to the enter key python calls this return which as you may know used to be a common name for the enter key that you can still see on some keyboards it's a quaint little carryover from typewriters 
So when we bind the action of pressing return, activating the calculate rectangle function to the window, we suddenly have a default behavior for the enter key. Again, don't panic if this looks unusual. We're trying to build some familiarity. And since we're talking about keyboard access, I'm sure a lot of us solutions focused IT folks want to jump to, how do we do this? Well, as I said, we will revisit this. Tooltips refer to the little assistance bubbles that pop up in an application, usually when you hover a pointing device over a control for a short time. You've almost certainly seen these. They're common on Windows applications and sometimes also used on the web. If you haven't seen these, you can check some out right now because they're used in all of the mainstream web browsers. So just hover over pretty much any button on the browser itself. They're also all over the place on Microsoft Word. Not only can these be generally helpful, but in many environments, they're essential for people using certain assistive software like screen readers. Sometimes it's hard for us to believe that there are blind people using mainstream applications, but there are, and it's hard. I've tried using some job access software and concentrating on the audio cues requires a huge amount of mental capital. It is exhausting. The tooltips are often the only information that gets communicated to users who are using job access software, and we need to do what we can to make their experience easier. Unlike with hotkeys, tooltips are something that we can sort of start coding right away. There is a part of the Tkinter package called Tix that adds the balloon functionality, and it's actually relatively easy to use. This Tix thing needs to be explicitly imported as well. So just like with our Tkinter import, we want to do it at the top of our code file, right after the comment header. Other than the import, there are only two new steps. Otherwise, this code is quite a bit like our Tkinter Hello World application that we looked at earlier in this video series. There's one line that creates a balloon object, which I have called tooltip here. And then there's another line that binds the balloon to a button along with a message. You also only need one balloon object that you can then bind to every single control on the form. This means besides the import and the line where you create the balloon object, you only need one line of code per control to set tooltips up. So in this video, we talked about accessibility considerations for graphic user interfaces. The things you should know at this point is you should be able to make the case as to why you need to know about software accessibility, and you should be able to list those four main considerations we talked about to, to ensure that your software that you design is accessible. In the next video, we'll talk about the geometry manners for Tkinter, which is how you set up the layout for a Tkinter application.